in trying to make non-commercial games for learning. Uh, we did, which is, we did things that I think are expectable. We, we designed stuff that was made by baby boom adults, that was sort of made by principles of instructional technology and really didn't break the mold, didn't break the pattern. They weren't good games and they weren't really good new learning. Mm -hmm. Now we're beginning to see games coming out from you know, game designers in their 20s who do understand learning and do understand game design and they are making good things and they are making things that work. Mm -hmm. And so I think we're going to see over the next few years a real explosion of much better uh, products. Some of this is, if you think about it, in the commercial industry, the independent game, the independent commercial game industry was very slow to develop. I mean, for a while there really was none, but now with the download services for all three of the platforms, you're seeing a bunch of independent uh, games like Flower, Braid, mm -hmm. other games like that that are made for relatively small budgets but are really top games. They're, they're doing as well as many of the commercial games. And they're setting a standard for so-called serious games. I mean, if you can make commercial games as good as Flower, as good as Brave, for a modest budget, we certainly can make games in the learning sphere that are that good. We're talking about learning and using technologies that often uh, you know, people under 30 know a lot more about, and it's not surprising that when they apply our theories, they do a better job than when we apply our theories, and I think that's all to the good, and that we need to really release that creative uh, energy. Uh, the other thing you bring up, though, is a very serious matter, and that is we really do need and don't fully have new business models. Mm -hmm. Because think about it, we're trying to make things that do social good. Uh, but if the social good is done for free, it dies when the grant's over. Right? And so we now realize that we have to think about how can we make products that uh, go on for a long period of time and therefore at some level earn enough money to sustain themselves and still have uh, good uh, uh, properties for equity and for doing social good. And uh, loads of people now are thinking about how we can get new innovative business models so that everybody wins. I think there's a number of models we can think of. There are going to be double bottom line businesses, businesses that are committed to social good by solving our educational problems but committed to making money and making money not just to enrich individuals but to keep the social good going. True of many academics, we didn't think that business models were important. Uh, we were getting paid to do the stuff already. Uh, now uh, I do see the business model as part of us having a long-term impact. Many, many young people today uh, are taking gaming beyond gaming. They're not just playing the game, they're making the game, they're designing things for the game, they're on setting up discussions and guilds and websites around the games, they're learning new software, pieces of software to contribute to those sites or discussions or to make design products. Uh, and very often, as they organize themselves into learning communities to do this, uh, their passion for learning in that community actually gets to be even bigger than their passion for the game. Uh, and it's a trajectory towards learning communities and towards thinking like a designer and producing and not just consuming uh, that some of our best games uh, give rise to. And of course we're seeing products come out, commercial products, that are built on that. Spore is a great example. Spore is designed so that you play and then you design and then you play and you join a community and you get your products in the game and then you design with those people uh, collaboratively. Mm -hmm. Got very good tools to do that. Kids from you know nine years old to old people do it and can mm -hmm. do it. Uh, Little Big Planet's another example. I mean, there's a whole bunch of products coming out that say, why don't you see playing and designing as alternative, as things you can do together and you can integrate together. So this becomes as much your product uh, as ours and becomes a community event, and not just an individual event. Uh, I think the lessons there for education are massive because it means we're going to have to start designing not just pieces of software but ways for people to set up learning communities that they're productive within. They're, we make the distinction between a game which is just the software and the so-called you know, uh, meta game, or some people call it the big G game, a capital game, which is the whole set of social learning interactions built around the game. We used to argue, well, you know, if we're going to do games for learning, we've certainly got to have this community of learning built around the game, but now the commercial industry realizes you don't even make money if you don't build a learning community around the game. Mm -hmm. It's an integral part to gaming, to participate in a collaborative community. Uh, uh, around the game. Yeah, my work has never advocated putting games in school. I think it's a fine thing to do, but that's not what my work is about. It's putting the learning that games do in school. That's learning that's centered on problem solving and collaboration. In school you get a bunch of facts and information. You can't solve problems with them. So you get nothing. 
but the interesting thing is if I make you solve a problem and I you know, really design the experience of the problem solving to guide you and mentor you, which is what good game design does, I get problem solving and I get facts and information because you've got to learn that to solve the problems and I get you collaborating in a community where you might even innovate. You're going to design new things and do new stuff. Uh, that's, I want to see that model go to school. It doesn't have to have a game in it. We can, we can do that in the world in many different ways. The other thing I want to really stress about games is, uh, because this is now, as, com as industries are building up to do this, it, it, it is not a good idea, in my opinion, to try to teach a whole curriculum through games. It's too expensive. Uh, we want to learn in many different ways. Games are particularly good for preparation for future learning. If you want to motivate somebody in an area like chemistry or physics, a game is an ideal way to not only motivate that learning, to get them to see why you do it, what is good about it, why it would be a turn on to do it. It also prepares them to get ready for learning in the future. That future learning doesn't all have to be in games. Uh, and, uh, I, you know, we, we tend to get you know, uh, obsessed with one platform, but just like in the world where kids don't just game, they also go on the internet and they write fan fiction and they you know, mod games, they do a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, we want our curriculum to be a whole bunch of stuff.